All right, our final example that we're going to work through is writing out the Lewis structure for IO3 minus. Okay, so first, figure out the number of valence electrons that we have for our overall molecule. That's going to be seven for our iodine. We have three oxygens. Each one is going to have six. And then we add one more because we have a negative one charge. And so we have a total of 26 valence electrons. And then we go and we find out what's our central atom. That's going to be our iodine. It's our least electronegative atom. So we would have iodine surrounded by those three oxygens. So now our next step that we want to do is we want to draw out uh, and give all of our terminal atoms an octet, which we can do. And so now we count how many electrons we've used. We've used 8, 16, 24. Well, we still have two more. And that's good because we need to give our iodine a, an octet. And so we go ahead, we can draw and say this is a negative one charge. And so we look at this, everything has an octet. And so now that we see that everything has an octet, we want to think about, well, is this the best structure? Right? Are we, this, is, this is perfectly fine. This is an acceptable or allowable um, Lewis structure. And that's because all atoms have an octet. Well, we want to answer the question, like we just looked at in our previous video, well, what about formal charge? Do all of these have a formal charge of zero or close to zero? Well, we notice that all of our oxygens have the same behavior in bonding, right? They all have one bond and six lone pair electrons. So if we calculate the formal charge of every single one of our oxygen atoms, we would say it's equal to its effective nuclear charge minus one bond, six lone pair electrons, negative one. So each of these are going to have a negative one formal charge. So now let's go ahead and look at the formal charge of our iodine. It's going to be seven minus, it's got three bonds and two lone pair electrons plus two. So now we go here and we see, well, we're not really off on a good track. Every single L atom has a formal charge. That's not favorable. It wants to have the minimum amount of atoms with a formal charge. And so we would want to think to ourselves, well, what, could, what would this molecule do that would allow the formal charges to decrease? Well, let's see what happens and think about, can iodine expand its octet. Okay, well we look at iodine and we see it's in period five. And we know if it's period three or below, so yes, it can expand its octet. And so that would mean we could have more than eight electrons around it. Well, the, what we're not gonna do is we're not gonna think of taking all oh, this pair of electrons and let's move it over here. Okay, that's not what we're gonna do we are going to think about, uh, well, what happens if we take this pair of electrons and now we share it between those? Because if we were to take it away, that's gonna make it so that oxygen doesn't have an octet anymore. Well, let's see what happens when we do that. We now take our iodine and we leave a single bond to the oxygen on the right, single bond to the oxygen on the left, now a double bond to the oxygen at the bottom. Now notice we didn't add or remove any electrons. We just moved where those electrons are being shared. So now if we calculate the formal charge of our oxygen that's double bonded to iodine, that's gonna be six minus two bonds, four lone pair electrons, zero. So that's a formal charge of zero. Okay, we're on the right track with our oxygens. And now our formal charge of our iodine is gonna be seven minus, and now it has four bonds, two lone pair electrons, now it's only plus one. So we did, we're on the right track. We decreased the formal charge of two of these to be closer to zero. Well, if we actually wanna get even closer to that, we could take another one of these pairs of electrons and form another bond, okay? And so let's do that. Now let's say instead of this pair being here, that pair is actually bonded there. And so now we have a double bond. Again, we didn't get rid of any electrons. We're just moving where they're bonded. So that, that's going to give a formal charge of 
that oxygen of zero, that oxygen of zero. This one's still negative one. And now if we were to recalculate the formal charge of our iodine, it's gonna be seven minus five plus two, zero. Now we can do this again only because iodine can expand its octet. If it was something that couldn't expand its octet, we would stop there. Okay, so now we see it can expand its octet. So now everything has a formal charge of zero. Oxygen has a negative one formal charge. This is the best we can get when trying to describe our uh, Lewis structure. The reason for that is that the sum of all the formal charges of every atom is gonna equal the charge of the molecule. So if our molecule has a charge of negative one, which we notice it does here, the best we can get is having one of them have a formal charge of negative one. Well, if we continue to bond more and make another double bond, like if we were to take this and make another double bond, well, that's gonna give me a formal charge of plus, of negative one, excuse me, on iodine versus oxygen. And this goes against the idea that we talked about in the last video of wanting the formal charges to sit on our most electronegative atom, which is one of our oxygen atoms. So if we're not gonna do that, we see that we now have our best structure. But what we notice is that, well, I just chose arbitrarily to make this a double bond and that a double bond. Well, what happens if that's a double bond instead? So let's say we have another way of drawing this. Oxygen on the left double bonded to iodine and then we leave the one on the right as a single bond. And so now we see a different oxygen atom has a negative one formal charge on it. And we also notice that there's one more way of drawing this, where we would have the iodine double bond on the right and the left, and then the single bond to the oxygen on the bottom. And now our formal charge of negative one is sitting on the oxygen on the bottom. So what we would notice when we're doing this is that none of these are more stable than any one of them. All three have the same stability. They all have the same formal charge characteristics. Now what I mean by that is that each of them has a negative one formal charge on an oxygen atom. And that is, and what we notice here is that leads to three different structures because we can think of these as being different oxygen atoms. Now none of one of, neither one of these are more stable than the other. And so what that would mean is that all three are what we call resonant structures. So when we say something as a resonance structure, what we note here is that the only difference is where either double or triple bonds sit, but they have the same stability. Okay, so again, same stability means that we have the same formal charge characteristics that we would observe in all three of them. And so if I'm gonna write out what the Lewis structure of IO3 minus was, I'd actually have to write out all three of these structures and say they are resonant structures up there. They are all equal in stability. The actual behavior of this molecule we notice is going to be a hybrid of these three. And we're gonna talk about the implications of that when we talk about bond length and bond shape. So hopefully this gives us a good basis of drawing Lewis structures. Uh, we are going to tackle some more of these and do a lot more practice in class.